Email. Whether you like it or not, most of us use and probably rely on email pretty heavily for work. Now, for the most part, the stock mail app on your iPhone is probably good enough, or if Gmail is your thing, then the stock Gmail app is a very good option as well. But what about those who want more control and features with their email apps? Well, in this video, I got you covered as we're going to cover some of my favorite email apps for your iPhone. All of the apps featured in this video will be linked down in the description, and starting off with our first app, we have Spike. Now, Spike actually used to be called Hop, and I believe we featured them once before on the channel, but Spike is claiming that they are the world's first conversational email app, which basically means they remove the clutter from the messages like headers, signatures, etc., in order to be more efficient and productive with your emails. Personally, I don't think that they're one of the first conversational email apps as I have seen this style before, and none of those things really bother me, but I suppose this style is a much more natural way of having conversations with someone. Aside from conversational email, Spike also offers more human priority in your inbox, separating everything else like newsletters into another inbox so that you can read it when you have more time, leaving your main inbox filled with messages from people you interact with more frequently. You also get a unified inbox option, which is quite common with pretty much all of the email apps featured in this video, but one unique feature is that if you have a team at work or a group of family members planning a trip, you can take advantage of the app's group feature and keep all of your conversations and plans related to that topic all in one group. It's kind of like group messaging for your iPhone, but this time for email. It's kind of a mess for users who aren't using Spike, however, but it works nonetheless. One of my favorite features is the ability to add quick messages with a simple tap of the lightning icon. You can use one of these simple emoji responses or create your own, slightly more professional response. It's definitely a time saver. These features alongside email snoozing, unified calendar, encrypted messaging, cloud app integrations, and much more is a good reason to give Spike a chance. Polymail is our next app, which is actually pretty similar to Spike, with a few different features of its own that makes it stand apart a little bit. Reading an email looks pretty traditional, although a comment and mention feature is available from the desktop version of the app, which seems to be more targeted towards teams at work. The iOS app does have a few awesome features available, like quick tagging or labeling of emails, read later, and one that is hard to find these days, email tracking or read receipts. Read Receipts gives you that peace of mind that someone has received and read your email, and every time they read your email, you can actually be notified of this, which gives me a good reminder to go ahead and follow up with that person while they're actually looking at their email. You can also add calendar invites right from your email composer, have automatic follow-up reminders turned on if utilizing Read Receipts isn't quite your thing, and there's also a one-click unsubscribe option too. Plus, if you really like the iOS app, you might want to give that macOS app a shot as there are far more in-depth features at your fingertips that can really take your productivity to the next level. Airmail takes a few features from our previous two email apps, but has a more stripped down and minimal approach in terms of the app's design. Swiping from the left gives you a view of all of your folders and various sections, which includes an integrated to-do list of sorts, which is also a plus, as well as a snooze section and a separate section for attachments, which is sometimes the only way that I want to find a specific email. When inside of emails, the app doesn't go too overboard with all of your options at the bottom, but it really just gives you the most important three, which would be reply, archive, and delete. Once you begin to reply to a message, however, the features are much more present, like tracking, which is something that I mentioned is kind of hard to find these days, send later, reminders, and email templates. All of your other options can be accessed by tapping the ellipsis in the top right corner. This is called your action list, which is full of options to choose from and can be fine-tuned along with the other features in the settings menu. This app is compatible with an absolute monster list of other services or applications to help you integrate your emails into the rest of your workflow and tasks. Like Polymail, the AirMail macOS app is also a robust and fantastic alternative to your Mac Mail application. Now, a few days ago, we released a video going over what's on my iPhone XS Max, and if you missed that video, you can click on the card in the upper right corner, and it was highlighting some apps that I use on my phone, wallpapers, etc. One of the apps featured and what really prompted this entire video to be made was Sparkmail, and it's our next app on the list. 
Sparkmail is a very well-designed app. It probably has one of, if not the best UIs from this list of email apps. It's clean, relatively minimal, but still offers all of the features and buttons that you need to get through your inbox and emails quickly. One way to accomplish this is to take advantage of Spark's Smart Inbox. I'm not a big fan of unified inboxes, but Spark does a good job of finding what's most important and bringing those messages to the forefront. Also, searching for emails with Spark is probably one of my favorite and best things about this app. Archived or not, you can practically find any email dating back many years with just a few keywords. Other than that, you get all the great features that a lot of these other email apps offer, like send later, reminder to follow up, smart notifications, and a large list of heavily customizable settings. Just about everything that you interact with can be customized to your liking. For example, I usually archive all of my emails or like to mark them as red from my notification center, and you can actually customize your main actions for each email notification that comes through and how you interact with it. So I highly recommend using this app, and of course, like the other apps, pairing it with its macOS counterpart. Finally, our last app on the list, and my personal favorite of the five, is Edison Mail. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it didn't beat out Spark Mail by much, and sometimes I prefer Spark Mail over Edison, I just switch between the two, but I'm just a big fan of the UI, mostly because it reminds me of the Stock Mail app on your iPhone, but with a bit more of a modern look to it. It boasts a very clean look with no other distractions present. One of the bigger draws to me for Edison Mail is its use of an onboard assistant that can help organize all aspects of your inbox and your life, like the subscriptions that you have, travel arrangements, bills or receipts, and my personal favorite, a built-in package tracker. The assistant basically eliminates the need for a few other applications that I might need to keep track of those services. You get real-time alerts for flights and gate information, or when a package is out for delivery. Now I really like having all this information in a one-stop shop app like email, which is something that I spend a lot of my time in anyways. Not to mention you get all of the features that have been talked about a lot in this video like custom snooze, undo send, and even a few new ones like face or touch ID integration to give you an extra sense of security with your emails. There's also a super helpful one tap unsubscribe system in order to help clean out the junk from your inbox. I really like this app. It's not perfect, but it has everything that I might want, minus read receipts, unfortunately. So if you're thinking about using an app from this video, be sure to let us know how you're liking it and which app you decided to go with in the comment section down below. Also, if we completely missed one out there that seems worthy of us checking out and isn't super obvious like Gmail or Microsoft Outlook or something like that, be sure to let us know which app that is so we can maybe feature it in a future video in the comment section down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.